This is ancient woodland, so it's been had trees on it since it, at least 1600. Throughout that time, it's been managed in coppice with standards. And so coppice with standards means there's some huge trees like the oak. Underneath it is all the hazel and the ash. So all the hazel and the ash would have been managed for things like firewood or for making like hazel hurdles and stuff like that. It's been managed like that for like hundreds, if not thousands of years. What we're trying to do now is to try and recreate that. By doing that, you're maintaining the habitat for all of the animals that have like evolved to live in that kind of cycle of coppice with standards. So the coppice is cut every seven to 10 years, cut on rotation. So little bits that will be cut every year you're doing a little bit but over 10 years then it will all it all have been done so things like bluebells dormice will all have evolved to live in that cycle hi i'm dan from dust and splinters today i'm going to give you an insight on how i turn an ash tree into an axe handle so the ash tree that we're going to cut down is uh, an ash that's got ash dieback and that's part of the reason why we're doing this woodland management so that we can uh, manage the trees that have got this disease by cutting them down we're creating spaces to plant new trees so even though we're cutting down trees we're not we're not doing deforestation we're just using the timber that we cut down so for making axes or for firewood and then with that timber we're creating potentially some income and then we can use that income to buy new trees and to plant them up again so even though we're cutting the trees down and that is seen as like a, a bad thing, uh, there's actually good that comes from it. So the idea for the uh, felling of the tree is that you take this section out first. So that's the first cut and it's called the gob cut because it's kind of like a gob shape. So that bit comes out and then you do a back cut. So this back cut comes in from the back, as the name suggests, and it should meet up parallel with the gob cut and it would leave a hinge. So the hinge is this stringy stuff here and that provides like a levering point. So as the tree comes down, uh, it can push against this back bit and as it falls over this hinge helps to control which direction it falls in. Um, so that is uh, hopefully sound wood that is going to be strong enough to help direct the tree coming down. If there's any, the trouble with ash dieback is if there's any rot in this section here then that can affect the hinge and that will potentially cause issues in which way it's going to fell. But luckily this one went, went okay. This is the piece of ash that we just cut down. Um, what I'm now doing is I'm going to split it into billets. So those billets are straight sections that I can then carve with the axe. Uh, what I'm looking for in this is for grain that's the right direction. So when you're making an axe handle, you want the grain direction following the same as the axe head. So in this stem, the grain direction is going around in circles. Um, what I'm going to do as I'm splitting it out is I'm going to look for sections where the grain's the straightest uh, and try and pick those pieces out as I split them. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this axe to um, shape this billet until it's like a, a square shape and that allows me to then use it on the shave horse. Um, so this is a carpenter's axe so it allows me to hold it right close up to the uh, head of it for doing fine shaving but then I can also do big chops depending on where you hold it on the handle.
So now we've uh, got to this stage by carving with an axe. Um, what I'm going to do now is use the draw knife and the shave horse to start taking more, more material off it. Uh, so I can use these tools to be a bit more refined and I will make it, make it into a more comfy shape to hold and um, I'll start shaping this end so that axe, hand, axe head can go on top of it. What I'm doing is by eye. I'm trying to get it as straight as possible by eye and trying to make sure the lines are, like some of the curved lines are flowing in a nice, what looks like a nice direction. People always ask me like, how long does it take to make an axe handle? This part of the process is quite um, quick, but the, to turn this into a, a proper handle, this will need to season for probably two, three, four months. When wood dries, it contracts. So if you imagine this is gonna go onto a metal head, if I was to put it on the head now, as it dries, it would contract. So that would mean that the head would come loose. Yeah. So it needs to be dry. Once the handle is seasoned, we then put the head on. Uh, the heads that I use are old vintage heads. So I tend to use these because they're better quality, better value for money. So you can pick one of these up for the same price as a new one, but the, the metal on an old head is gonna be a lot better quality. So use a wooden wedge to expand the timber at the top of the handle and that helps to hold the head on so when you're swinging it about it's not going to fly off. The downside to using old axe heads is that they tend to take a, a bit of sharpening. There's lots of dinks and little chips and stuff that you have to grind out so what I use is a whetstone and that uses water to help lubricate it and create a smooth grind. When the head's all sharp and secure uh, I then treat the handle with a beeswax and oil mix that helps to weatherproof it so that it can be used in all conditions and it won't be damaged. So that's my process of turning an ash tree into an axe handle. My name's Dan Small from Dust and Splinters. Thanks very much for coming along. I hope you enjoyed it. If you do want to find me, you can find me on Instagram. My handle's uh, Dust and Splinters. Thanks very much. I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs>